Congressman Sean Duffy joins us. Congressman, thank you so much for making time in your busy schedule as you head toward the midterms. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, why don't we get right into it? Tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself and why you think that voters in Wisconsin should return you to Congress. Yeah, so um, Sean Duffy, born and raised in Hayward, Wisconsin, the 10th of 11 kids, uh, married uh, to my wife uh, for almost 20 years. We have eight kids. My oldest just went to college. My youngest is two. Uh, I've been uh, a prosecutor in Ashland for 10, I uh, was there for 10 years, and now I've been in the Congress for eight. And uh, in essence, uh, I, I, I've been fighting to make sure we have an economy that's, that's, that's growing with more opportunity, better wages, more jobs. And if you look at the tax reform that we've implemented, letting people keep more of their own money, um, streamlining rules and regulations. That doesn't mean no rules or no regulation, but making sure they're functional for small businesses has allowed this economy to explode. In Wisconsin, for hourly workers, wages have almost increased by 5% in the last year. So this is actually working, and uh, when people go to work, I think they appreciate the Congress um, who helps make that happen for them. Now, of course, the first half of President Trump's term has been marked by, by what many would consider a pretty toxic political environment. How would you describe the president's leadership style and or his effectiveness as a leader? Listen, if, if you look back to the uh, eight um, years prior, we had lackluster growth. If someone lost their job, they were afraid they couldn't get another job. They were afraid they might lose their house. Um, right now, you see that this economy is exploding. Um, if someone's child now graduates from, from college, they can get a job. They don't move back in your basement. It's a really good thing. So the policies um, have actually uh, been been working. So someone might say, I don't like the, and I can agree, sometimes I don't like all the tweets, I don't like every comment from the president. Um, but if you look at the policies that the president has been advocating for, they've been working, even renegotiating trade deals. This is a, this is a blue collar recovery. People that put boots on every day are going back to work with better wages. Um, and uh, I'm in Wisconsin, but if you look at what's happening on the Iron Range, um, they love President Trump. Uh, I was just at a factory, um, a, a welder, uh, a couple days ago who was saying, I've been a Democrat my whole life, but President Trump's fighting for me um, in my job, and I voted for him in 16, and I'm, I'm not going to end because of the success of the policies. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the federal debt. Approaching $22 trillion right now, Republicans passed a massive spending bill this year that is expected to have trillion dollar plus deficits at some point. Have Republicans lost their way in terms of fiscal responsibility? So, so in, no, uh, if, if uh, Republicans were able to pass that bill by themselves, it would have, we would have spent far less. But we're stuck, even though we have the House is Republican and, and the Senate's Republican, uh, there's this filibuster rule, so you need 60 votes to pass any bill in the Senate. And that means Democrats in the Senate can say, no, we're not gonna vote for this unless you spend more money. And that's actually what happened. So they were able to drive up spending to get a deal so the government didn't shut down. Um, uh, if Republicans did this on their own, we would have been able to, to curb spending. But you're right, the, the debt is too high. Um, and my view is you don't necessarily have to slash and burn spending. All you have to do is cap spending. Don't let the spending grow. And so as your economy right now is growing at 3 to 4%, as your economy grows and your spending maintains, that's how you get um, our debt right-sided. Um, but um, it's hard to stop the federal government from spending more money. Mm -hmm. Health care, major concern for people in Wisconsin and across the country. Um, your opponent supports Medicare for all. What do you think needs to be done? Sure, our t our Medicare is made for our seniors. I want to make sure I preserve Medicare uh, for our uh, senior citizens who've paid into that program. It's already uh, doesn't have enough money in it. We've got to shore it up. Why would you make it uh, less stable than it is today. Um, I support making sure seniors have Medicare uh, for them, uh, you know, for, for, for their retirements. But here's what we have to do. Um, I believe in a, um, a system where you have um, uh, uh, families are able to pick and choose plans that work for them. I want doctors, hospitals, clinics, insurance companies to all compete for your business. But the politics are, this, are very divisive in this space. Um, visions are different. And so what I think we need to do is say, listen, let's give it back to the states. If California wants to have a single payer system, Minnesota wants to have a single payer system, great. But if Wisconsin wants a more free enterprise system um, or Oklahoma wants a, you know, a, a different system, let the states figure out what works best for them. And uh, in the end, after, you know, five, ten years, we'll see which state uh, offers the best health care at the best price. I think that's the, the, the way we, we can move forward and get liberals and conservatives to agree on a pathway forward. Because right now, everyone's going, going in different directions, and health care is not working for 
American families. Do you think any solution even at the state level needs to preserve protections for those with pre-existing conditions? I do. So uh, listen, every family has a family member um, with a pre-existing condition. So um, I think that should, yeah, that, that should no doubt be the case. And in Wisconsin, before Obamacare, we had coverage for those with pre-existing conditions. And uh, you want to make sure that people who, who have that uh, pre-existing condition can always access health care. You don't want to exclude a group of people from accessing, pricing them out of health care. But I'll just tell you right now, a lot of promises were made in Obamacare that haven't come to pass. Um, and I mean, prices have gone up. In, so really right now, healthcare, if you're really rich, it works for you. If you're really poor and you get a subsidy, healthcare works for you. But if you're in the middle, your prices have increased and, and you can't afford health care coverage. It's kind of like college, same kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, okay. my, my daughter's going to college, so I bring up college. So. <laughs> I just put three through, I know <laughs> that. You know you do. <laughs> As we mentioned, the, the country's very polarized right now. You can see that with the Kavanaugh hearings. Is there still room in Congress to reach across the aisle and work with the other party? So, so America sees the tax debate, the health care debate, and no bipartisanship. So I'm going to be honest, I work with Democrats all the time. Um, uh, I work with Keith Ellison. I work with um, Tim Walls from Minnesota. Uh, if you're going to pass a bill out of the House uh, and pass it through the Senate and make it become law, you need to start with a Democrat um, in the House. So I work with Democrats on my committee all the time to get a bipartisan bill so I can get a bipartisan vote in the House, so I can get Democrats and Republicans in the Senate to vote for it, so I can get it to the President's desk. So on all kinds of bills, we actually work together. You don't hear that story. Maybe it's not that sexy, but um, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Caravan, thousands of migrants headed toward the, the southern border right now. If and when they arrive, what do you think should be Listen, done? Uh, if, you don't have, if you don't have a border, I agree with President Trump, you don't have a country. Um, you just can't have people say, we're going to you know, storm into uh, your country without your permission or consent. Um, and so I, I don't think you can incentivize caravans of people to come into the country. If this one this caravan of 7,500 today, who knows how big it's going to be when they get there. If they, if they get to the border and we say, come on in, you're going to have caravans every month coming to America. You're going to have planes. That are going to, I mean, we have to be able to say, no, 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 no. We have an organized system in which we let people come in to America. We evaluate people. You just can't say, I'm going to get in a caravan and, and storm your country. It's, uh, it, it, this, that's, not, that's not the way we should do it. And so um, I think we have to push, pu pu push back on the caravan. And I'm a believer that we need immigration reform. And I would tell you this, the, 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 there's a lot of uh, bipartisanship on how we fix this. There's not a lot of differences, and that surprises people. But you know, from border security, l give people legal status who, are, who have been here working, who haven't committed crimes. Um, deal with the DACA kids, um, let a work visa system happen so you can bring people in. And, and so instead of walking, f you know, four, you know, f several thousand miles across uh, these countries, let them fly into our uh, America with a work visa. Let them fly here. It's way safer. And then um, we have internal enforcement, like an E-Verify. Um, and, then, and then again, you have border security. I think that's the, an, an easy way to deal with immigration reform. So if people are coming across the border unlawfully, we know they're running guns or drugs or human trafficking. But just one, one last point. We we're have, almost we, out of time. I know we are. We, we, we are out of time. We, we, have a, we, have, we have a drug <laughs> crisis in this country and in our communities. And those drugs are coming across the southern border. It has to be secured. All right. Congressman Sean Duffy, thank you so much for making time to visit with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks.